Welcome to this course on fundamental structures of algebra. On your left, you see a picture of George Mostow. George Mostow was one of the legendary mathematicians of the 20th century, famous for a strong rigidity theorem in Lie theory and geometry. His work plays a crucial role in the works of three Fields Medal winning works by Margulis, Perelman and Thurston. So, no doubt he is one of the mathematicians who is a great inspiration, especially to geometers. On the right, you see a picture of a textbook which has the same title as the title of this course. One of the authors is George Mostow. The other authors are Joseph Sampson and John Pierre Mayer. So as you could have guessed by now, this course is going to be largely based on this textbook. This textbook was written long ago, almost 50 years ago. In fact, almost 60 years ago, correction. And uh, I will be using this textbook largely. But because this textbook is out of print, I will be providing lecture notes which will be modeled on this textbook but will also draw inspirations from more modern textbooks like Artin as well as Winberg. You will find a precise reference in the notes. So this course is about the fundamental structures of algebra. So I need to tell you briefly what this course is about and why you should take this course. So the name fundamental structures of algebra suggests that we will be studying something, some structure, something to do with algebra. So, if I were to ask you or if I were to just tell you the word algebra, what are the things that come to your mind? Well, to my mind, the first thing that pops up is the letter X. This has haunted me a long, long, long time in school. The letter X, which is usually called the variable X, uh, made very fancy is something that frequently occurs in algebra. What other things come to our mind when we hear the word algebra? Well, one thing that definitely pops up is minus b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4ac by 2a. This is the famous solutions to a quadratic equation, the formula for the solutions to a quadratic equation. So immediately we can understand that there is an element of solving equations in algebra. So solving equations no doubt plays a fundamental role in algebra. And these are not necessarily linear equations as this formula is for a quadratic equation. So in more generally polynomials come into play. And this sort of ties up the letter X. Some of you might have even studied polynomials in several variables where X is given company by Y, Z and so on. Right? Polynomials in several variables and their solutions. They also play a role in algebra. Furthermore, several other things like algebraic identities. Algebraic identities. For instance, one of the most famous identities is the binomial theorem. x plus y the whole power n is something which I cannot recollect now. So, you have these various actors. Later on, maybe in your high school, you might have studied matrix algebra. This is essentially how to multiply matrices, how to invert matrices, how to use matrices to solve linear equations, what is the determinant of a matrix, when is a matrix invertible, so on and so forth. Many, many things with matrix algebra. So, fundamentally, algebra, if you want to give a capsule definition, is the study of a set S, set S, along with operations along with operations. What we have been studying in school starting way back from when we learnt how to count the natural numbers, then we studied what negative numbers are, the integers, then the rational numbers, the real numbers, matrices, polynomials, all of these are just sets with operations, one or more operations. Abstract algebra is the abstract study of sets along with these operations. The focus of this course is going to be on one particular algebraic structure called vector spaces. So essentially this course is primarily about linear algebra. But unlike most courses in linear algebra, 
vector spaces and more importantly linear transformations on these vector spaces will not be the only topic of study. We will have an integrated introduction to linear algebra where we study other algebraic structures as well in quite some detail. So primary structures we will be studying are groups, rings, fields and of course vector spaces and a more general structure modeled on vector spaces called modules. So this is a course where we do not restrict ourselves only to vector spaces but study other structures as well. So this is a unified treatment of linear algebra and abstract algebra. All the textbooks I listed at the beginning indeed adopt this treatment. Now such a treatment is very common in graduate algebra textbooks. Two famous ones are the one by Serge Lang and another one by Rotman, Joseph Rotman. These two are uh, very famous books. The second one of them is somewhat new but it is will definitely become a classic. So we are taking an approach which is somewhat sophisticated but the prerequisites for this course is virtually nothing. Uh, even high school level mathematics just being familiar with it is more than enough. You need not know matrices in great detail. So this will be a course that essentially starts from scratch and will take you all the way up to the foothills of graduate algebra. The reason why I think an integrated approach to linear algebra is important is because the ever increasing use of linear algebra has led to a sort of compartmentalization which is in the short term efficient but in the long term counterproductive. Say you are interested in quantum mechanics and quantum computation and you decide to take a course on linear algebra and you learn only linear algebra in Rn. That's how most elementary courses in linear algebra are done. Then you are sort of inconvenienced because it would be of great help if you knew, if you knew groups also when you are studying quantum mechanics and quantum computation. At the same time it might help if you know a bit of infinite dimensional linear algebra when you are studying operators with which, are which are very important in quantum mechanics. Therefore, I am taking this intentionally more sophisticated view but to reduce the burden on the learner we are going to go really slow in the beginning recalling such elementary things like what is the meaning of A divides B in the natural numbers and even stuff like uh, what is the meaning of uh, the division, what is the meaning of the division theorem, what is the what is a reminder, what is a quotient, what is mathematical induction, stuff that you are no doubt extremely familiar with. We will first deal with that in a rigorous and precise manner. So we will begin our study with algebraic structures by defining what an algebraic structure is and what the primary features of an algebraic structure are what the primary features of an algebraic structure are. We will begin with groups which are in some sense one of the simplest possible algebraic structure but very important in things like quantum mechanics. Groups model symmetry. So one of the most powerful aspects of algebra is diverse objects like polynomials, numbers, matrices, vector spaces, linear transformations, and symmetry, things like symmetry can all be studied in a somewhat unified way. We will see all this and more in the next video.